Welcome to Real Adventures. We've got a super exciting episode for you here. This is our striped bass uh, special for fishing from a boat uh, using a slide rig. Uh, we've been fishing the stripers here on the Hudson for about six years now. And uh, we've caught, I don't know, somewhere between 200 and 300 fish. Um, but it's taken some time. I mean, my first season, I want to say we caught three or four, and then we got to, you know, three or four uh, a week, and then we got to three or four a session, and, you know, we've kind of learned these things over the years. So what I wanted to do is just put a video together uh, and talk about, you know, what exactly we use for targeting striped bass on the upper Hudson. It is very different than anywhere you go, but I mean, it is a common concept that no matter where you go, different areas, the fish key in on different bait and you use different tactics. So what we're going to cover is the fish, the river, uh, the rod and reel setup that we like to use. Uh, the fish finder rig on the anchor, bait tank, and live versus chunk. So uh, first of all, striped bass are just incredible fish. Uh, it's the largest sport bass, sport bass series uh, size fish, um, and these they're just incredible. Um, they put on an unbelievable fight. It's an ocean going, ocean class striped bass. So why are they here in the port of Albany in the month of May? And the reason why they're here in the Port of Albany in the month of May is because they're anadromous, uh, which anadromous is they live in salt water but spawn in fresh. And here's the uh, migration here. Basically, they enter the Chesapeake Bay in the early spring and they work their way up the east. Now, the Hudson River runs 150 miles from Manhattan and the Statue of Liberty up to Albany. Um, but just north of Albany is Troy, where you have the first dam on the river, the Federal Lock. And so the entire river is tidal. So twice a day, the tide comes in and out on the river. Uh, so for an uh, upstate New York fisherman, it's definitely a little different than most of the other waters that are around. Now, this little chart here kind of tells you what you can expect from the tide. Uh, it starts off at high tide and then goes down to low tide. Now, the river naturally flows out, so when it's going from high to low, you have double speed current, okay? And so if you're fishing on an anchor, this is a time when the boat will really hold steady and straight and allow you to set rods up and fish on the outgoing tide. Uh, and it also has the uh, benefit of kind of keeping the smaller fish out of the channel, uh, the white perch, the catfish, uh, the smaller fish will kind of move to the side of the river and it'll just be mostly the stripers that are going after your bait Which when you're chunk uh, Fishing which we'll talk about a little bit later uh, Can be a real advantage Now once you get an idea what the tides are going to be like, you know a slack tide You'd have no water current incoming the water's going the other way outgoing can be very fast It's mostly just outgoing that you care about and so I like this little tracker here where I can go and just type in Albany tide chart and find out when the high tides are for the week and then just put them into that little chart. I can kind of plan. Now, I've found the outgoing tide thing, it, it, you know, is particularly important if you're fishing the fish finder rig and you're using herring or chunk. The outgoing tide is the best time to fish. I'm not saying you can't fish slack tide or incoming. But during slack tide, it's hard to be on the anchor because the boat's all over the place. On incoming, it's going to turn around. The current is not that strong. Um, and what happens is you get all those little fish again running around the river that'll be chewing at your bait. The catfish, the white perch, the eels. Uh, the outgoing tide is when I find is best to target striped bass uh, on the anchor if you're fishing off the anchor. So now let's turn the page and uh, take a look at what equipment we're going to be using out there and, and what I prefer. So I prefer a bait runner reel and this has got a drag system on the front and then a secondary drag on the back. So you get the rod out in position set and, and then you switch it to the secondary drag system. And now the fish can take the bait and run with it without getting a lot of pull. Um, I like to use just a basically an eight foot 
uh, medium uh, bait rod. Uh, I prefer Power Pro Super Slick 8 uh, braided line. I, I like braided line. Um, it is not abrasion resistant is probably the worst thing about braided line, but you can put more on the reel. I feel like it's better for casting. Um, I, I don't like the stretch of the monofilament, and, and I prefer braided line. I also feel like uh, when you're fishing chunk, uh, the braided line is much more sensitive to the hits, and the fish they tend to hit a little bit lighter and the braids are a little more a little more sensitive to it and uh it's a little better for chunk fishing i think than monofilament but i'll uh, i'll touch back on uh chunk versus herring fishing uh towards the end of the video we'll get back to that so now you got your reel and your rod and your line and we come down to the rigging and that's what you're going to put on the end of the line uh, to connect yourself to the fish and so I like to use a fish finder, what they call a fish finder rig, and you attach a slide clip to your main line first, and then that clips onto a weight. Now that weight is going to vary depending on how strong the current is. I usually find with outgoing current, uh, when it's at its strongest, about three ounces is the right amount of weight. Um, but if there's not a lot of rainfall, the current's a little bit slower, I would go with more like two, two and a half. So you got the main line with the slide clip on it there. Again, that's the braid. Uh, and then you've got uh, the barrel swivel comes next now, especially with uh, braid, it's, it's good to put a little bead on the line between the slide clip and the barrel swivel. Um, and so then you've got the barrel swivel and then you wanna tie on some leader. I highly recommend fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon, uh, like braided line, uh, has very little stretch, but it's also completely translucent in the water, completely clear, so the fish are not gonna see it. You know, I don't think you gotta worry too much about the fish being line shy in the Hudson, but um, it, it never hurts, it never hurts. So I prefer to use the fluorocarbon line for the leader. And as far as, as a hook, that's going to come down to regulation. It's varied from year to year. I really like Gamagatsu hooks. I find circle hooks are definitely better for, for live bait. Uh, they're, they're a better application there. I do like the Gamagatsu big river hook, but I, I'm not sure if the regulations are going to allow us to do that anymore. I don't want to get into the regs, but the bottom line is at the end of the, the leader comes the hook, and uh, we put it for live herring there's a bone kind of right between the eyes so i've had herring out there for six and seven hours that are still uh completely alive uh and then sometimes you want to switch to chunk bait depending on the water conditions but again we're going to get back to that towards the end of the video but that brings me to our next subject which is our bait fish herring now the herring are just like the striped bass, they're anadromous as well and they come up to spawn as well as you'll see the black cormorant burns come up as well. Uh, and shad, you wanna stay away from shad if you catch them. They look just like herring but they're larger but they're protected. Uh, but we catch the herring on a sabiki rig which is basically a line with six flies on it. Of course state reg is five so you wanna clip one of those off. Uh, and it's got a swivel at the top of the line and then the main trunk is like heavier line 20 pound tests and then the smaller ones are about 50, 10 pound tests out to the little hooks and during the peak of the season you can catch four or five of these guys at a time um, and another thing that's really nice to have is a sabiki rod and so that rod is actually a tube and the sabiki rig will reel right up into the tube. And what's nice about that is, you know, you can just reel that thing up and throw it in the cabin of the boat or throw it in a rod holder, and you're not gonna getting those little hooks hooked all over everything. So sabiki rods are really nice to have, or even if you're going to a remote location to get bait, uh, the sabiki rod is really nice. You can, you know, throw that right in the back of your car, and boom, it's ready to fish. You just take it out, and, and you're good to go, which is very nice. So once you catch your bait, you got to have a place to put it. I'm not fishing off of a fishing boat, so I had to make do. So I kind of made my own bait tank, which starts with installing a power converter on the boat for me because the pump I'm using is uh, 120. So this is my bait tank that I made up, and I just installed three bulkheads, two one-inch and one three-quarter. And the two one-inch pipes are overflow. So as the pump fills the bait tank, the overflow pours out of the side. 
uh, and it's it just keeps flowing like that uh, and this thing will keep about 30 herring alive 30 35 40 so I've had four people on the boat and this thing uh, have the herring uh, you know stay alive no problem so this is the pump that I have is a fish tank pump and like I said it plugs into a power cord. now if you could find a 12 volt pump I'm sure that would work too uh, and so here's a picture of the tank on the back of my boat and again I don't have a fishing boat but this is how I may do and uh, this thing works great it keeps the herring alive and, and it works for me so lastly I just want to talk to you a little bit about tactics and live versus chunk so for me one of the most frustrating things about striper fishing was when you get into it when the conditions are good and the water is clear you are clearer you will catch herring pretty easily with your sabiki rigs and get them into your bait tank and the stripers hit them like freight trains and that's when the fishing is the best but unfortunately sometimes you get a lot of rain that time of year and the turbidity or the cloudy or murkiness of the water goes up and you will struggle to catch herring because the water gets pretty murky and I, my, my philosophy is the herring can't really see the sabiki jigs too well and then what happens is the bass can't see the herring as well either and you got to remember this is the murkiest water that they are in in their life and so my success has been to switch tactics um, if the water is clearer and you can catch herring relatively easily then fish live and and that's the most fun too I mean they hit them like freight trains I think if you're using monofilament or whatever kind of line you're using that is fine but when the water gets murky the game changes uh, the striped bass which are sight predators just can't see the bait fish as well and my tactic has been to switch to chunk meat and the fish relate back to those old factory senses the smells and they smell the bait just like most fish do and I also feel like at this point the way they hit that bait is much more like a normal fish because they're not tracking a live predator they're biting a chunk floating in the water okay and so this is where braided line I, I feel gives you an advantage in this scenario fish finder rig um, you know or bait fishing on non live bait the fish will hit more subtly you don't get that freight train hit and that freight train run I have can't tell you how many striped bass I've caught where I said oh man this is another catfish but it wasn't it was a striped bass It's because the water is murky and you're fishing chunk they're not gonna hit like freight trains they're gonna come up and bite it like a chunk bait because it's a chunk bait and so unfortunately if it gets hard to catch the herring because the turbidity of the water is higher then I am going to go back to fishing chunk and I changed uh, the rigs up a little bit on your fish finder rig uh, I use about seven feet on live I use about five feet on chunk for leader length and this is another reason uh, you want to keep those leaders about that length to stay away from those nuisance fish the catfish and the white perch and that sort of stuff um, but if you get in the murky water if the herring are harder to catch then I would switch to chunk and after that chunk's been sitting in the water for 15 20 minutes in a river that's flowing it's you know it's probably about out of scent so it's good to keep those chunk baits relatively fresh I usually run them about 25 minutes to a half hour and then change them out and that's how I've been able to catch striped bass even when the water is murky even when bait is hard to get because uh, you know switching up the tactics you sit there all day on a live herring in murky water and not get a single hit now those are just my tactics I know some people that say that's that's insanity or whatever I don't know I've boated about 150 fish a season for four or five years well up to that I didn't catch that much in the beginning and uh, that's just a little bit of the tactics that have worked for me on live versus chunk and what I look at when I decide which to fish so in this video I, I focused on a fish finder rig and fishing off the anchor in a boat but I fish a variety of methods uh, here I am wet wading from shore with a lure and you can see like I'm using a I'm using a bait reel there I mean you can use a variety of 
techniques and a variety of gear. There is no one way to do this. Um, here it is from the boat and uh, using a nice casting setup and a nice casting reel and a plug from Top Water. Um, here we are out on Martha's Vineyard. She caught this fish with a squid. Uh, and so that was pretty, the fish are really keying in on squid. And so she used this squid lure here to catch a squid, which is pretty neat. We had never done that before. And so being they were keying in on them so well, I actually used a squid lure. There's a lure that looks like a squid and caught a couple of fish that way. The moral of the story is that you really have to look at not how to catch the bass, but how to catch the bass in that area. What is the specific gear? And there is no one way. You can use a variety of gear, a variety of things will work. Here's an umbrella rig off the back of the boat. Uh, we trolled it. This is at Block Island. And uh, you can see we did pretty well there. The one time we caught three of them on one umbrella rig. So I'm going to be doing a bunch of videos coming up live off the water uh, using the fish finder rig, uh, using live, using chunk. We'll try to capture a lot of this stuff. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're also going to be trying out the drone for the 21 season, doing a little drone fishing. So don't forget to subscribe, like, stop back, check out the upcoming videos, uh, hopefully more live from uh, action on the water type of stuff. Don't forget to like, subscribe, feel free to uh, leave a comment on uh, your thoughts or tips or anything uh, you might have to add, and we'll see you next time on Real Adventures.